Hello and welcome to another video. In this video I will show you how you can trigger Jenkins jobs from GitLab. If you'd like to see how, stay tuned. Here I have signed into my GitLab instance. I'm using the GitLab free subscription. Um, before we can get started setting things up in Jenkins, what we want to do is we need to have an access token. Um, in order to trigger uh, Jenkins jobs, you can use three different types of tokens. You can use a personal access token, you can use a group access token, or you can use a project access token. In the GitLab free uh, subscription, you unfortunately will not be able to create a group or project access token. So for this demo, I will be using a personal access token. To create your personal access token, what you would do is you would go in the upper left hand corner on your user icon, drop that down, click on edit profile. In edit profile, then on the left hand side in the user settings menu, go on to access tokens, click on here, give your token a name, set an expiration date or delete it. Important to note here is the scope of the token needs to be API. So select API and then create your token. Once the token is being created, you will be able to retrieve it, take note of it, because we will need it and use it in Jenkins. Um, once you have then left this page and your token has been created, there is no way for you to retrieve the token again and you would need to create a new one. So uh, just on a side note, make sure once you create it, take note of it. That's how you create your personal access token and now we'll hop over into Jenkins and see what we need to set up there. Here I have signed into my Jenkins instance. The first thing we need to do here is we will need to install an additional plugin and that plugin is called just simply GitLab. Um, in order for you to install a plugin, once you signed into Jenkins, just go to manage Jenkins, then to manage plugins, once you're in Manage Plugins, go to Available Plugins and search for GitLab. I have installed it already. These are the incorrect ones. So um, I've installed it already. I will show you which one it is that you need to install. Install Plugins. If I scroll down, um, I do have GitLab here. So this is the plugin that you want to install. GitLab version 178 in this case as the making of this video. And then this plugin allows GitLab to trigger Jenkins builds and to display their results in the GitLab UI. Now we will need to next go ahead and create a connection and we will need to go ahead and configure the plugin. To configure the plugin, we will first need to create a connection and make Jenkins aware of our connection to GitLab. So go back to manage Jenkins up here and then click on configure system. Once that page loads, scroll down and after the plugin has been installed you will see that you have a new uh, section here called GitLab. And I have created mine already um, but I will walk you through uh, so you will be able to just put in here the connection name. You can give it whatever name you would like. Um, the GitLab host URL seeing that we are on GitLab SAS. It's https gitlab.com and then the credentials you would need to here create a new credential saved within Jenkins um, where we will be using the API token that we've previously created. So how does that look like? I will just click on add here. The credentials provider in this case here will be just Jenkins and then we can go ahead and uh, make our selections here. So domain, I leave it at global credentials. The kind you want to drop this down and here you want to select GitLab API token. So you want to select that. The scope, you can go either global, Jenkins, the nodes, items, all child items will have access to it or just the system. I leave it at global. Here is where you want to paste the API token in that we've previously created. The ID, you can take a look here, internal unique ID which these credentials are identified from jobs and other configurations. Typically left blank, I'll leave it blank, that's fine. And then description, you can type something in here if you'd like or not. And then once you're done, you just click on add and you will have your connection name to GitLab set up. To make sure your connection was set up correctly, what you want to do here is just click on test connection. 
It's testing the connection and everything is set up successfully. And now you want to click on save to save your connection settings that you've set up for GitLab. Once we have everything set up, we can set up a project. Um, if you want to set up a new project in Jenkins, once you're back on the dashboard, click on new item, give your new item a name and select freestyle project. I will not go through that right now. I will show you how I have set it up here in my demo. So for that, I go into my project, I go into configure, and here we see the details. So when you create your new freestyle project, go ahead and put in a description. I will go ahead and skip over most of this. Um, this is just for demo, as I said before. Now, because we have included, we have installed our plugin. So when I go ahead and I'm setting up my new uh, project in Jenkins, you will have this GitLab connection uh, available here as well. So once you drop this down and um, we have created our previous a GitLab connection, the name of that connection should show up in here, and you would select that GitLab connection that we've previously created. Um, in this demo, what I'll go ahead and do here is my build triggers. I have set up that when something changes, something is being pushed to my GitLab repo. Um, I'm triggering this job here on push events and on open merge request events. Um, you can select other triggers if you would like. You can go through that. Um, I never rebuild approve merge request and comments. And that's pretty much all I did here. So scrolling further down in our Jenkins uh, project, you have the build steps here. And all I'm doing right now, because I do not have any agents set up, I'm just executing a shell script. And all I'm doing here is just I'm echoing out running Jenkins trigger from, well, maybe I should type it right, GitLab. And then I'm just printing out the environment variables that have GitLab in them to show what environment variables are actually available when this is being triggered. Um, I don't have set up any post build actions. This should be enough for the demo. So once you've set everything up, click on save. And we're all set on the Jenkins side. Now we need to go back to GitLab and actually tell our project that we have an integration where a a project in Jenkins that we would like to use. Here I'm back in GitLab uh, in my demos group, and uh, we have to do some setup here to get our Jenkins integration going. Um, I do have a repository or project set up already, Jenkins demo. I will go in here. So um, I have set up the integration already, but I'll walk you through. So to set up the integration for your project, you want to go into the project, into settings, and then you want to go on integrations. And then in my case, again, I have set it up already, but what you want to select in here is in the add an integration, you want to go ahead and select Jenkins. In my case, it's not here because I have an integration already, but let's go into the integration and take a look at it. So it's active. Um, my trigger is for push and uh, merge requests you want to give it the Jenkins URL where your Jenkins, Jenkins server is running. In my case, don't mind that it's not HTTPS. I didn't set up an SSL certificate or anything uh, for this demo. Uh, there's my IP address of my current um, instance that is running and the port. So this is where GitLab can reach my Jenkins server. I'm running it on Linode. Um, you want to give it the project name. This is the Jenkins project name. So whatever name you gave your project in Jenkins. This is what you put in here. And please note, it's important that you um, type it in here, URL encode it. So in my case, the percent %20 is my space in between here. Uh, then you want to give it the username, uh, the user uh, to log into your Jenkins instance. And then you want to go ahead and type in the password for that user. Um, it will show at once you saved it, it will show blank here. Um, but I did provide that particular password for this user. And then you can click on test settings once you're done. And it will tell you connection was successful. So we're good to go. And then you want to save and you have created your integration. 
Now let's see if this whole thing works all together the way that we want to. And um, I will split my screen so we can see Jenkins as well as GitLab at the same time. So here I have split my screen. On the left hand side we have uh, GitLab. On the right hand side we have Jenkins. So in Jenkins I will go into my project. Once I'm in here you see the last run. Um, and on the left hand side in my GitLab repo I will go ahead and I will go to my dev branch and I will make a change to my readme. This is a very simple, simple setup here. Um, I will make a change here. So let's remove this test commit comment in the readme. Let's scroll down to the bottom. And let's just commit this change. And let's watch over here. It will trigger my job. And there goes my job in Jenkins. So my pipeline has been triggered in Jenkins. And if I go into the output of this one, so we can go in here and then go into the console output. And you will see here, started GitLab push by Tobias. So I made a push here on my GitLab instance and it triggered my job. And you can now see here too that these are the uh, variables that are available in Jenkins when we trigger our job through the integration here in Jenkins. Next, I will show you how you also can set up uh, triggering a Jenkins job through a webhook rather than the integration. Even though using the GitLab integration, for Jenkins is the recommended way. You can also trigger a job in Jenkins using a webhook. So I'll show you how you do that. Um, here I'm still on my split screen. Left hand side is the GitLab instance. On the right hand side is Jenkins. So in Jenkins, um, I will be reusing my demo job that I had created, my demo project that I have here. So if we go into the project, go into configure. And in here, what I will do is for my GitLab connection. I will remove the GitLab connection here. I will leave my build triggers at build when changes push to GitLab. Um, what we want to do is under the build triggers, once you have selected build, well, we have it selected already, but if you create a new um, project, build when change, changes pushed to GitLab. In here, you need to go into advanced. So once you drop down advanced, scroll down and then on the bottom here you see in the section secret token so what you want to do here is, is you want to generate a secret token you want to take that secret token and copy it and then you want to go to your gitlab instance and in my case here in my gitlab instance i will just go ahead and create a new project i create just a simple plain old uh, project here uh, let's call it Jenkins webhook. There we go. Um, we want to initialize it with a readme. We want to keep it simple for this demo. And I'll create my project. Once my project has been created, I will go ahead and create a, a new branch. I want to create a dev branch. So I'll just go in here, new branch, call it dev create branch. Now I have my branch here, I have my main branch, I have my dev branch, everything is great. And now I want to create a webhook. Um, if you want to create a webhook, just go into the project settings and then webhooks. Go in here. I leave the URL blank right now, but the secret token that we have copied from over here, we want to paste in here. So here is my secret token. And the URL that you want to use is actually given to you already. And it's given here, build when change is pushed. And then here's the URL that you need to use. So what we want to do here is, is we want to highlight it and then copy it. Um, if this deselects, make sure you reselect it again. And then you want to paste your URL that will from here into your URL of your webhook. So we have our URL. We do have our secret token. I want to trigger this on push events and on all branches. And we are good to go. 
and we have everything set up in Jenkins. Now I do have my token here, and I want to save this. So now I have it saved. I'm back to my um, project overview here, my status, and I have my webhook here. I'll just add my webhook, and my webhook was created. So let's see if this works. Let me go ahead and go to files, go into my dev branch again, and here we'll just make a change to the readme, edit, and I'll just add something in here. Test webhook, and let's push this to our dev branch. Let's see if it triggers, and here it is. It triggered through my webhook, it triggered my job, and it ran. And if we now go over here, and we go into the console output, you'll see that my Jenkins job was triggered <coughs> through a webhook in GitLab. This is another way that you can trigger jobs from GitLab in Jenkins. This was just a, a brief and quick demo of how you can trigger Jenkins jobs uh, from GitLab, either through the Jenkins integration in GitLab or through webhooks. I do hope that you found this helpful, and I do appreciate your time watching my video. Thank you, and see you in the next video.